I said I wasn't going to stop a lot. I, I'm not, but uh, I did want to point this out. This is that uh, washout that I made on purpose to carry the water down there. Uh, nothing's been done to maintain it in at least 20 years, I would say. But I wanted to show how check dams, there that's a big uh, catchword right now uh, in the media. They form naturally. Obviously, with a little help, they could form better. But you see, I was doing the opposite. I was taking them out so that the water would be sure to get as far as possible. I know better now. Well, there should be a name for this spot. Uh, it's maybe the top of the first bench, I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, you can see that here there's water. You can see by the ferns. I mean, there's water, you don't see the water. Uh, and today I'm going to go on up to the highest springs, some of the highest springs that I know of. But I will take a moment to go out that way and see if there's been any change in, in that particular spring. One other thing I wanted to film here. Now this, I think, I still am not sure what what kind of a tree that is. Uh, but I wanted to film that. I should probably let somebody know about those. I think, I'm quite sure they're edible. Though I wouldn't eat them, but my, uh, my, <laughs> my uh, neighbor, he, he might walk up here just to... I'll draw his attention to this video and let him decide. And down there is where I saw all those little tiny, what I thought were maybe chestnuts. It was no surprise that uh, those springs were still, still the same, still dry. Now I stopped here, I'm going up the steep part again, because once again there's that fungus, or mushroom, or fungus I guess, and there's that other one. I thought I should get that on, and there's one. This is bringing memories back. Right here is where I turned the water out back when I, when this was still part of the whole family's property. I turned it out to head down that way to to what what you've seen a little earlier. I remember doing that. Well, this spot I know very well. That's where the road turns out to go more or less, well, sort of level, sort of on a contour, out past. I think four springs, three or four springs. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to go there uh, today. I, I'm going to go on up to the highest springs. Now back this way, the furthest one I've never seen go dry, I don't think. I call it the Hermit Spring, and I've always thought that was probably the highest surface water available on the mountain, at least in dry times. but. I'm going to go up and see what these even higher ones are doing, or of similar height. And there were two planted trees there. Again, I'm not sure what they were. The one looked almost like a holly. Maybe they both were, but they were planted. Now this is an unusual plant to see this high up on the mountain. That's barberry. And some people say it's evidence of where people lived. I remember seeing some up here before once. And one other thing I'm going to say is there's an area off there to the right that has what's almost like topsoil, <laughs> soil, instead of, instead of the, typically the mountain I'm walking on looks like this. And I remember it too. There's an area right in around there which one could actually conceivably have a, a little homestead, graze animals, a water supply, garden. And this area it's beginning to get a little unfamiliar to me. Those orange ribbons, I don't know if you can see them or not, they prob they may be all the way from back when this was logged, which was quite a long, well, 15 years ago maybe. Uh, but anyway, all this, uh, all these ferns, they, they show that water is close to the surface here. I'm going to head out that way. That's where he came from. Um, here is a spring which appears dry, it's not running, but it appears to be strong enough to, to dig out a 
uh, a gully down below it when it, when the water's coming coming hard, but not a perennial spring. I've only got about one or two more chances to see if there's a perennial spring on this part of their land. Aha, pay dirt or pay spring or whatever. There we have. I thought this one was going to be perennial. If, uh, and, and this was the last chance I had over here. Hmm. I, I don't think I'm going to go to work on this just yet uh, with, uh, with keeping it on the surface and holding it. I don't think I'm going to just yet. That's why I brought the plastic I've been carrying along. Uh, but I'll leave that here and then maybe head on out and see what I see for the rest of the way. But, but this is what I was hoping for. This could certainly be developed into a water, a potable water source. I guess I could identify this as the painted rock, painted rocks springs, because there's one, there's another there, there's another there. And I'm guessing that this was the work of the forester that we had when this had to be basically clear cut from here up. I think he purposely protected with his marking some trees in that area. On the way to church today, or on the way back, I may try to film this from a distance to give you an idea of where on the mountain I am. Good, success. I'm on my way down, uh, but I, want, I stopped to show you the effect that that uh, uh, bar is what I call it, across the road, uh, had upon the, the soil moisture and therefore the vegetation. That's where I came from, and here's where I'm heading. And once again, you can see the effect that that soil moisture has on the vegetation. <clears throat> I, I stopped there for a second because I thought I was looking at a hemlock, but I, th I guess that's a pine. Uh, this is very close to where I was f filming uh, uh, last, uh, last week. I see by the four-wheeler track that uh, um, the uh, Hetrix friend has driven up through here fairly recently. Uh, but anyway, I stopped again because I don't see any reason why this isn't the effect that that a terrace would have <clears throat> if if water were held if the soil uh, <clears throat> were kept friendly to life in dryness you would you you could get growth of this sort all over this mountain and you wouldn't have to cut the trees down either i mean this is partly because the sun shines down through here but not really uh, and now the effect upon the trees would be harder to see because because that, that would be up the leaves, but it would be there too. An argument for terracing. This, oh, that's a, uh, that's a sedge. Looks like nut sedge, but I don't think it's nut sedge. Rushes grow up here too. Um, this might be, no, I, I don't know these so well. But in addition to grasses and sedges, you also will have rushes sometimes up in here. Last week I came from that direction, and this was the first water, surface water, that I found. And sure enough, it's still here and, and flowing a little stronger, I would say, now. Part of that's because of rain, part of that's also because the days get shorter. Uh, and there's the tracks of his four-wheeler. This place you may recognize, now I'm back on our ground, and uh, this is, I call this the new, uh, the new bis. Uh, and then there's the newer bis and the still newer bis. Uh, I see it's got water. Uh, now this is in the natural drain. This isn't a spring really. And it's leaking right there, which I'll fix. But I also see that it's continued to collect sediment, which is really interesting to me. That's where I was. This is the site of the newer bis, and that I think is what I call the still newer bis. Well, in any case, um, see all the sand that's been deposited here. That's sand, no doubt about it. That's usable, certainly. I mean, all these are are like just little indications 
of what could be done. My purpose here, you might remember, was to get the water into that skitter track. Ah, the yellow bucket. This is Grandpa Jim Biss, and it's, it's got water. And if I had just devoted myself to this spot, I have no doubt that I could have gotten that water all the way out to the field using this plastic that I now have available. But as before, it's going in a, a, a hole right there and then back into the natural drain. But the time will soon come where I'll be back at this. Bye for now.